Hey, welcome back to Cedar Porch Homestead. I'm JR and today is processing day. Now it's not quite time to process these guys yet, but it is time to start processing. These guys are quail, but before we get to the processing, I want to kind of walk through what we do here on our little backyard homestead to make sure that we have a good abundance of quail. So everything starts right here in the aviary. So here in the aviary is where we keep our breeding stock. And from our breeding stock, we get these tiny little quail eggs. Now from here, our quail eggs have two different destinations. One, these actually go to our plate or two, they go to the incubator. So once we collect those eggs from the aviary, if they don't make it to our breakfast plate, they come right here to one of our incubators. Now this one is the Nurture Right 360. We also have an incubator from Farm Light. They can do about 35, 36 eggs each time. So we're gonna start leapfrogging between the two just to kind of continue to see which one performs better. I actually have a video I'll link below that shows uh, kind of a head to head between those two incubators, but these guys are on lockdown, so they should be hatching in the next day, maybe two days. So we'll see what happens. All right, so once these guys hatch out of the incubator, over to the brooder they go. Now in the brooder, they spend about three weeks until they're completely fully feathered. They're not dependent on any heat lamps. And that's when we can move them out to the tractor outside. Okay, so that brings us back out to the yard where we have our mobile tractor. Now we move these guys around once a day to get fresh grass every single day. And let me show you what kind of destruction they leave behind. So as you look behind me, you can see the quail's trail of destruction. Now I'm not worried about that tearing up my yard because it's doing two things. One, as they kind of scratch through it and pick out the bugs and the seeds and the grass that they want, we are creating a healthier bird for our table. And two, they're actually leaving a lot of nitrogen behind. So once this thing gets a little bit of rain, get a little bit of water on it, it's actually going to be a stronger, more vibrant yard. And that's just creating better forage for our next quail or our next chickens that are going to be coming through here. Okay, so Bailey is gonna be catching a quail and we're gonna to try to vent sex because again, we're gonna to try to add some females to her aviary for some breeding stock. But as she catches this guy, notice she does have gloves on because just because they're little birds does not mean they don't have razor blades attached to the bottom of their feet. There's no white coming out of there. So you're female? Yep, all right, so. Oh, well her back, this, this might look. Oh, and then so she's been getting bred by some of the males in there. Okay, all right, so found a female, vent sex, and the way you vent sex, I know the camera probably didn't show it, but what you're looking for is when you open up that vent on the back and got, kind of give it a little bit of a squeeze, you'll have a white substance that comes out. We're not gonna talk about what that is. So one of the important things is when you're adding new stock is get you some leg bands so you can color code and you can keep track of when you're adding and what, uh, how old they are and make sure you document that in a little journal as well. So with Pharaoh quail, one of the big things you can tell is on their plumage right there on their chest. If it's a plane and it's not spotted, that's gonna tell you that it's a male, but we're gonna also vent sex this guy just to check. So you can see on this male, he's got a little bit of that white stuff right there. Well, and unfortunately for him, that means he's going in the freezer. All right, so as Bailey's cleaning that guy, now we're not gonna show you the processing uh, side of this because social media and the video powers to be don't really like a showing ki that kind of stuff, but I'll show you the finished product as soon as she's done. All right, as promised, here's the finished product. Only about 40 more to go. Okay, so rather than taking all the guts and feathers and everything and throwing them in the trash, what we'll do is we throw them in the compost, bury them with some chicken compost that we've got from the run here. And all we're doing with this is creating better, stronger, healthier soil. By burying that in compost and covering it with that chicken compost from our chicken run, you're also not going to have to deal with any kind of smell coming from this compost as that stuff starts to break down. So now that these guys are ready to be cleaned up and put bagged, we have these vacuum seal bags that we really like. We do our whole chickens in them as well, and they work really good for quail. So let's put it in the water. All right, so we're looking for the water to be about 180 to 190 degrees. So we're right on that. So it only takes about 10 or 15 seconds of keeping that bag submerged. Hmm. 
maybe a little longer. All right. Pull the silicone straw, tighten it up, and there's your vacuum sealed quail. All right, now that we've got all these quail in these nice little vacuum sealed baggies and they're ready to go to freezer camp, you would think that we're completely done, but we're not. We're gonna wait till this evening and I'm gonna show you what our next step is. All right, so now that it's evening, we've got an extra set of hands and we're gonna be moving these quail over to the empty quail tractor now because we need to make room in this brooder for some chicks that'll be hatching in the next day or two. All right, so those guys are all settled in for tonight and we are waiting on the incubator to start hatching. Okay, so I was going to finish this video out with the last process or the beginning of this process of watching some baby quail hatch and moving them over to the brooder, but let me tell you why staying in your lane is so important because Papa messed up on this one. Unfortunately, my daughter who normally gets these set up She's the one that knows how to get everything going the correct way. I missed a step. I didn't reset our Nurture Right 360, so it wasn't turning the eggs the whole time. And unfortunately, we are two days past hatch day, and these guys look to be all duds because I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Okay, so even with that epic failure of me not doing what I was supposed to do, we're gonna move ahead. We're gonna get another batch of eggs in the incubator. So in 18 days, we can continue our quail meat production. So if you haven't had a chance, make sure you're subscribed to our channel. Give us a thumbs up and hit that notification bell so you're notified when we come out with new videos. And as always, we'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much.